welcome back to another episode here of the Gold Coast Frontline Podcast. We are absolutely chirping, waiting for February to come around so we can get some preseason under our belts, man. We're excited. Obviously, we've got preseason coming up. We've also got the uh, we've got the Indigenous versus Maori All Stars game coming up. That should be exciting as well. So, look, it's still January, guys. There's not a great deal of news to really cover at this very point in time. But we thought, you know what, we're still going to crack down with the podcast. We're going to have a bit of fun as we are getting to the season, we may as well really rock it back on in. So, obviously, my name is Blades. I'm from BKR Sport, and we do have Dane here from Clarkie's Rugby League column. Mate, how's the preseason treating you? Mate, not too bad. Welcome back to all our Gold Coast Titans frontline family and listeners. We absolutely appreciate you being here. Uh, at a time of the season, like you said, where it is relatively quiet, there's not too much NRL news, broadly, let alone Titans news specifically. So, we're going to get creative on this episode. We're going to do our best to make it as entertaining as possible. And We've actually got an episode where you can kind of play along at home. Like, I think this is a really fun episode for people watching on YouTube or listening to the audio. 100%. I'm going to put you under the test today. I'm I will just say here, just, just before we continue with this, I will just say, guys, if you are watching here on YouTube, uh, unfortunately, for some reason, uh, the camera keeps freezing on Dane. You can still hear him, obviously. So that's great. You can still hear him. You can still follow along. Obviously, I'm here. Hi, Wave. Um, but yeah, guys at home on Spotify and Apple and whatnot, you won't know that his camera's freezing. But just for everyone here on YouTube, it's just, uh, I don't know what's happening, but it is what it is. So we're going to crack on and yeah. uh, keep on going with what you're saying. Yeah, technical difficulties, but uh, this is a Titans trivia today, guys. So I've prepared 10 questions for Blaze, one of the most passionate Titans fans I personally know. I've done three easy, three medium, three hard, and one impossible. Okay. Well, I think this is, I've made this pretty tough, but I think like five out of 10 is a pass mark, if I'm honest. If you get 50% of these... Mate, you know you what? I'll, I'll be happy with that because, like, I hate being put on the spot with questions. Usually, like, yeah. if I'm not, if I don't have any pressure on me, I'm pretty good with it. But now I've got a little bit of pressure on me. However, I did do. Uh, I don't know if you've done one of these podcasts too. I did a podcast uh, either last year or the year beforehand where another content creator tested me on the Titans, and I think I got nine out of ten. Uh, and the only one that I didn't get right in that one was. Uh, something about how many hundred game players we've had, or something like that. That was the only one that I didn't get right, and I only I I, I think I said oh, anyway. Long story short, I got it off by one, so I was very close to ten out of ten. Mm. But I know you. I know you're going to give me even harder questions because I thought they were relatively easy. If you're going to give me hard questions. I'm terrified. Yeah, I've tried to make them creative as well. Um, I didn't want to go like all stats or all which name this player. So let's kick started. Let's get straight into it. If you are listening at home, please play along. Try to get your guess in before Blaze. And of course, I'll reveal the answer shortly afterwards. Let's start away. Uh, start right now with our first easy question. Mm -hmm. The Titans have only had six players with 140 games or more. Name three of these players. Ah, okay. Okay. Three Titans with 140 or more NRL games. Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out, because obviously, like, Lukey Douglas was here for quite some time, but I also don't know if he was here for that long, for 140 games. Um, surely Scotty Prince would have to be there. He was obviously here from 2007 to 2012. So you would have to safely assume... Uh, so I'm going to name three players, right? Three players, that's correct. Okay, so I'm just doing my reasoning right now, guys. I'm doing my reasoning. Um, I'm going to have to assume that Scotty Prince has played 100 games for us. He was here for so long. He was here for so long. Um, I was 140 games. Oh, 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 oh. 140 or more. But I'll give you a hint right away. Scotty Prince did not play 140. He only managed 124. So you dust off. See, this is why... This even is... more. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a tough question to start. Hmm. You shouldn't have actually told me that because I would have actually just said Scotty Prince and you would have got me wrong on the first question. Did Luke Bailey play that many games for us? Because um, I'm, I'm thinking back to those days. I'm thinking back then. Uh, I know that Phil Sami had his 100th the other to other day, uh, other day last year when we beat the Tigers, I think it was. Um, scrolling through players here who's played Preston Campbell maybe as well actually surely Presto he was here for a long time um, I, I just Luke Douglas keeps coming back into my mind but I don't know if he played 140 I know he was very consistent with his game time though was he 2017 through to like 2019 there's not enough for 140 games there 
Uh, oh, okay, so I'm going to put one out there, and I'm going to say Presto for one of them. I am actually going to try and say Luke Bailey as well, because he did play a whole bunch of games for us from 2007 to about 2011 kind of range. And I need one more. One more. And I don't even know if that's right, but I need one more. Oh, you know what? Did Ash Taylor do it? Because Ash Taylor was with us for quite some time as well. He was from like 2015 until about... Uh, until like... Two, I'm going to say Ash Taylor was one of them as well. All right, so one of those is correct. Luke Bailey. Ooh. So you've got one out of three there. I'll give you I'll give you some hints because I think you'll start to get them pretty quickly after I give the hints. Uh, another one to Luke Bailey was another prop who was a captain of the club. Um, Tina hasn't played that many, has he? No, no, he definitely yeah, captain hasn't before played. him. Captain before him. Um, my mind is blanking right now. My mind is it's dead set blanking right now. It is, it is so point. tough on the spot right now. He, he had a significant change of hair halfway through his time with us. A front rower that was captain who changed his hairstyle significantly. Oh, Rhino. Big Rhino, Ryan yep. James. Lucky and Ryan James. I think you'll get these next two as well. Think uh, high try scorers for the club. Uh, oh, Donny. Yep, he's one. Yep. Oh, a, another, another one? Another, I'll go Davis. There's another high try scorer. Yep. So yep. We're, there's, there's four you've got. Uh, I'll just tell you the other two. Uh, Will Zillman and Mark Minicello. Oh, Mark Minicello silly. being our most cap. Oh, wow. Yeah. I wouldn't have actually said that with Mark Minicello, so there you go. Um, I, 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 I would have guessed Presto or, or Scott Prince, I've got to admit. Yeah, because Scotty, he was here for a long time. He must have just been injured at points. I don't know. Because um, he was here from 2007 to 2012. I'm surprised mm. he didn't make uh, 140 there. Uh, Zilli, I could definitely see. I can understand that one for sure. Mark Minicello just wasn't going to come into my head, to be completely honest with you. How, how many mm. games has Ash Taylor played, um, by the way? Because he was with us for like seven years. Mm, I'll have to look that up, but um, yeah, he, he he wasn't one of them. I went 140 specifically because we didn't have enough at 150. So I went 140 and dropped that question a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, Ash Taylor was with us for a number of years. Um, I have to admit, I'm surprised you didn't pick Ryan James straight away. I thought yeah. that's someone you would have just gone bang because he was with us for a long time. Oh, he um, played 114 games for us, Ash Taylor. 114. It's weird because once you get over the 100 range, you know, you kind of just make up those extra 40. Yeah. Pretty much every player you said had 100 plus. It's just getting those extra 40 somewhere, which makes that question difficult. Mm. Um, but yeah, you got one of three there. So that's, that's a good effort. And then we're still too disappointed. To the rest. Oh, hold on. I'm gonna, I just want to quick. I'm going to quickly go have a look here at Scotty Prince. He played. Oh, he was so close. 124, Scott. How dare you? Yeah. 124 games. Shot. Gee whiz. Hmm. Well, this next one is another easy one, and it goes like this. <laughs> another easy one. I got one <laughs> yeah, out of three. Easy. <laughs> the Titans have had seven major jersey sponsors on their home away jerseys since our inception. Name three of those major sponsors. Now, Jet I'm not counting like nines or anything like that. Just our home and away regular. Jetstar, my pay now, and because uh, Jetstar was the big one, and uh, the lottery office, the one we got right now. Absolutely correct. In between there, we also had Neds, TFH, mm. Aquas, and I Select. Do you remember oh, that controversy with TFH? Yeah. Uh, when TFH tried to drop us because Ryan James stuffed up the grand final speech or something like that. Am I remembering that correctly? I remember when, I think it was the Welcome to Country, wasn't it, with Ryan James? Um, that, yeah, that, and he that, said, I'm sorry, and they just panned off him, right? Well, yeah, because, like, and uh, this has gone back, but in the same sense, like, you know, you got to forgive him. He's a rugby league player and he's a proud Indigenous man. You know, just because he made a mistake on such a big level. Like, he's not like like you and me. You and me, who, even though we're always on camera, we all, we're comfortable in front of camera, we're comfortable, comfortable in front of people, you can still make mistakes, man. I, I thought that was a ridiculous controversy, realistically. I think that, you know, for a guy that played for the Indigenous All-Stars and as a proud Indigenous man who does a lot in the community, um, yeah, no, I, I backed Ryan through that and I back Ryan through that now, so... Uh, but yeah, I do remember there was a bit of an issue back then. Mm, that was a, a, a weird time. Uh, but you know, absolutely now that one. I reckon you probably could have named them all, to be honest, um, <laughs> with how quick you got the first three. I actually wanted to make sure that I said the one that we've got right now, the lottery office as well, because, yep. uh, you know, obviously they're ours now. So we, we have to give them a shout out. Yep, absolutely. They support the club. Uh, our next or our final easy question. <laughs> we were awarded our NRL license in 2004. 
mm. and we were not known as the Titans at first. What was our mascot originally going to be? Ooh, that's not an easy one. That should have been a medium one, to be honest with you. Um, because there was a couple of... Like, obviously, the past of the Gold Coast, we've been the Chargers, we've been the Seagulls. Uh, the Crushers get added in with us, but they were Southeast Queensland. They were not the Gold Coast. Um, the Chargers, Seagulls, um, they're... So this is one. This is what the Titans, our specific license we have now. Mm. We were meant to have another mascot. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie to you. I don't know if I know this one. I don't know if I know it's, this. It's one. Honestly, not that well known because there was only ever one newspaper article about it in the Gold Coast Bulletin. Oh, uh, so and, and, and he puts like... this one in the easy section, folks. This is the <laughs> this is the one in the easy section. He reckons. Um, it's not too well known, but I thought you would have got this one. Maybe I'm I'm biased. I can give you a hint if you like. You can give me a little bit of a cheeky hint. Okay, so it was another current NRL club that threatened legal action if we used that. Oh, name. Dolphins! Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, we were yeah. going to be the Gold Coast Dolphins. They had Matty Johns in the newspaper with the logo on the Gold Coast Bulletin. Our colours were going to be orange and blue. I think that's like the same Ooh. as the Miami Dolphins in NFL. Thank God um, we didn't go down that path, man. I'm happy with our colours now. I love our colours. But fun fact, man. So they produced three jerseys for a promotional shoot that they were preparing until the league election came through. Mm. I've actually got one of those three jerseys. Andy Raymond, the former Fox Sports commentator, gave it to me. Oh, so wow. I'm, I'm going to wear it to like a game or something. It's like super cool super limited edition yes that's and super I'm, rare man for sure and not yeah. many people will know that as well like obviously if you're i reckon like ex Chargers, seagulls giants kind of fans uh would and the olden days fans might know that i know the ones who actually supported those giants Chargers, and whatnot they definitely would would probably know that one mm. for sure but yeah you would have had to have known about gold coast history prior to the titans actually coming in because yeah i, I do recall that now that's why i got dolphin straight away when you said that yeah, now we've got awesome history, man. Like I've got a um, Gold Coast Seagulls tie that I wear to work sometimes, like a vintage one I found in an op shop. Really cool. Different um, organizations, was... though, for everyone out there. Just want to clarify yeah. that and separate that. It's not like it's a continued club. It is separate organizations from those clubs yeah. to the Titans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just think that the history of it is still pretty cool, though, for our region. Like mm. players like Wally Lewis represented the Seagulls, stuff like yeah. that. So it's awesome. Let's move on to our first medium question. <laughs> According to Rugby League Project data, we have averaged over 20,000 home attendance in two seasons. Name those two seasons. 2010, easy. Uh, that's 100% 2010. If it's not 2010, it's a lie because that was a brilliant year. Uh, okay, the second one is going to be the more difficult one. Uh, the, you know what the benefit is, right? 2007's a benefit as well because... Are you talking about... Oh, sorry, you're talking about at Seabus? Yeah, at, at home. So home attendance. Okay, because we got Suncorp as a, quite a few home games in 2007. So that's where... That'll confuse me if it's not that, but I'm, I'm not giving that my answer yet. 2010, it's a bolter. It's a guarantee. Um, we were just packing get games out that year. Absolutely packing it. Uh, it... It couldn't have been after 2011. It just couldn't have been. So it has to be 2007, 8, 9, or 10. 10's a guarantee. I will say... I'll, I'll go 2007 and 2010, but I reckon it's both of them in the first four years anyway. So what I've got here from Rugby League Project data, which isn't 100%. If 2010 is, is not on there, it's a lie. Well, it's not. It says that 2007 and 2008... Are uh, the only years we had twenty thousand or more at home, but no we did way. come very close in twenty twenty three. We fell short by five hundred people on average this uh, this season. So, bro, there is no way. Year. There is no way that anybody in their right mind can tell me that we averaged more in twenty twenty three than we did in two thousand and ten. Absolutely not. I so think I've got here in twenty ten. Right. Our home venue was Skilled Park, and we averaged seventeen thousand eight hundred and seventy seven. There's no way we averaged more last year than then. We were selling out games regularly then. I don't know. Like I'm not saying you're. I'm not saying you're wrong. I I will personally yeah. come out here and say that I believe Rugby League Project is wrong in that regard because it could be because it's just archive data. Like it, it could be incorrect. Yeah, but that's I, why I made the question specifically through their data. Um, they're who I use for a lot of my stuff because they're really the only. They are really good one with that what, keeps the yeah. historical data. Hey. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I go through Rugby League Project for a lot of my draft series so I can get the, the, the data yep. and what from players in the past and all that. It's a great website, but 
you know, I, I think that I can probably speak for a lot of people here who obviously were there. Were you there in 2010? Were you going to games? I think in 2010, what I would have been in year eight, so probably not. I would have been like games I went with with mum and dad and stuff like that. I think I was in more like year 11 ish when I started going to games by myself. Mm, yeah, that's just really, really strange to me. So, listen, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but I just find that absolutely absurd that we averaged 2,000 more last year than in 2010. And in 2010, we made the prelim and we were crushing teams in 2010 with Scotty Prince, Preston mm-hmm. Campbell, Luke Bailey. Uh, big red, those kind of guys, um, you know, th- yeah, that's really confusing me. At least I got 2007, right? Um, and yeah. I was thinking 2008 and 2009, 2010, right? I said, I said the first four years, uh, but I just am very surprised with that. Yeah. Well, so we've done four questions so far. You got one third, one absolutely correct, one with a hint and a half mark so far. So you are on track, but it gets tougher from here. Um, this is another medium one. We have only ever beaten one NRL team by 30 or more points on two occasions. Name that team. And I know who you're thinking of. It's not them. Well, would it not be Manly? I would have thought you would have thought Warriors. So I'll rule them out and say it's not them. That's who I thought you would have guessed. We beat Manly by... uh, We beat Manly by... I think we beat Manly by 44 points twice. Because we beat Manly at Brookvale about maybe six, seven... Maybe five, six, seven years ago... But, uh, no, whenever AJ Brimo had a massive game against him at Brookie, I think we won like 44-32 or 44-30 or something like that, or 42-30. And then last year, was that that was our first game to break like a 10-game losing streak. We beat him at Seabus, and I think we scored 44 again, maybe. Not quite right. I'll give you one more guess. Another side that we've beaten twice by a 30-plus more margin. Yeah. Oh, 30 plus margin. Oh, I'm thinking 30 plus. Like, I'm. I'm don't worry. Okay, so. For, so I was thinking a team was beaten by. It was scored 30 plus points against. My brain didn't even get there. All right, so beat by 30 plus twice. Uh, well, the nice is a shout because we usually give them a good, you know, touch up at, at Seabus. Uh, we have beaten the Eels by a massive margin at Mudgee, so I would just have to assume that maybe there'd be another point throughout our history we're beaten by 30-plus again. So Eels is a definite shout. It's between Eels Knights. I don't think we've beaten Manly by 30-plus margin, so forgive me for that kind of reasoning. But with that being said, I was right in regards to uh, <laughs> the scores there, I'm pretty certain. Uh, Eels Knights, it's definitely not the Rabbitohs. We suck against the Rabbitohs. Wouldn't be the Storm. It's, I wasn't going to say the Warriors either. I know we beat them 44-0 that one time, but um, we've also had an awful record against that club for a ve- forever, ever, 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 ever. We always lose to those guys, usually. Um, it's not the Broncos. Oh, it's between Eels and Knights for me. There's a guarantee of Eels with one. I'm going to say the Eels, but if it's the Knights, shoot me. <clears throat> Oh, no, it's going to be the We've Knights. We've beaten the Eels. It's the Knights. Yeah. Oh! We've beat the Eels by 38 points and 28 points. So it really depends how you ask this question. If you say 30 or more, Knights is a correct answer. We've beaten them by 30-point margin twice. Uh, we beat them 38 to 8 in 2017, mm. and we beat them 36 to 6 in 2020. If we look for greater than 30-point margins against the side, only the Raiders. Uh, we beat them by 38 points in 2021, and we beat them by 36 points in 2013. Wait, so, so, can you tell, so is the Eels just flat out, like, like I know we had that 38 one, but is that just, that, that's the only one we've beaten by a massive margin? Uh, 26, so we've beaten the Eels by mm. a 26-point margin, so you would have been four short. Uh, but one was at one um, time we did absolutely nothing. I'm still kind of okay with that. Like, I know I know, technically I got it wrong because I did go with the 50-50 of the Eels, but I did mention the Knights there and say that I thought that was either, it was either the Eels or the Knights, and the only reason I went with the Eels is because of that big win at Mudgee, and I was just hoping there was another game there. But I'll, 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 I'll take the loss, but I'm happy with the answer. Oh, no, you got very close, man. That's a tough question, even though, it is, even though it's in the medium category. All righty. Final medium question. Hmm. Who holds the record for the most tri- <clears throat> most tries scored in an individual game for the Titans? And how many tries did they score? So who holds the record for the most tries scored in just one game? And how many did they score? Well, I'm going to go with uh, Unos Tres Cuatro, and I'm going to say Jordan Atkins. 
Yes, he scored four tries in 2008 when we defeated the Cowboys 36 to 18. Mm. I didn't know that one. That was, that's a really good that you knew that one right Mate, away. I banged that one. You remember I that game? That uh, I can remember the I remember the tries being scored on the right wing. So he was definitely right wing for us. And I can remember it was a big deal at the time. Like it was a massive deal. Jordan Atkins scoring four tries. It was the next best thing. Unfortunately, the career didn't pan out like he wanted to, but that was a massive game, yeah. Because he debuted when he was like 16, didn't he? He would have been a teenager still in high school when he scored four, right? Uh, no, he's not the youngest player to debut for us. That would be Moaki Potawaka. Okay, I thought, I, I thought Jordan... Maybe, am I thinking of a different Jordan? I'm thinking of Jordan Rankin, aren't I? You all might be thinking of Jordan Rankin, but with that being said, the youngest that has ever debuted for us was Mo, and that was when he was 18 years old. Nice. I do remember we had a, a Jordan... Um, yeah, but obviously can we I've just add that person. question in for the next question? So can you ask me now who's the yeah, youngest player ever debuted? <laughs> yeah, well, there you go. Uh, that, that would have been an easy one, so you would have got a mark there. But this is... Uh, this is where we get to the hard stuff, baby. We've got four questions left. Three of those I deem hard, one I deem impossible. So, <laughs> for the first hard question, how many times throughout Titans history have we won five or more games in a more than five games in a row, rather? So, how many times in Titans history have we won more than five games in a row? Uh, well, 2020, uh, you know what's beautiful about this, and it's a 50-50 about how beautiful it is and how annoying it is, right? Because I actually, fun fact, had this conversation the other day on the Gold Coast Titans fan club with one of the guys on there. Um, he actually asked this. So I'm pretty certain I know the answer, and I can make a good guess at the, the, the seasons. I'm going to say two. I'm going to say two. It, but I don't know if it's five or six or whatnot. Is five our most in a row, by the way? Well, that would give you the answer to the question, which I can't reveal yet. Oh, I didn't... Because I... I'm saying more than five. Oh, more than five. Okay. Yeah. Because I know 2020 is a guarantee because at the back end of the year, we obviously flew under Justin Holbrook and nearly made the eight if it wasn't for a certain incident with the Sharkies. Um, so there's guaranteed one right there. Um, I would have to nearly assume like 2010 would nearly be there based off of the amount of... Based on the fact that we came fourth that season uh, and, and played the Wars at home and beat them 12-10, I think it was the final score. But um, uh, how many times we've scored five, we've won five games in a row? Well, last year and the year before that are definitely out of the equation. Uh, and then 2021, I don't think so either. 2020, yes. Uh, I'm, I'm actually... It could be three. I'm going to go two, and I'm going to say 2000... Oh, it could be 2009. I'm going to say two. I'm going to say 2020 and 2009. Fortunately, that's wrong. 2020 and is definitely right. I, no, it sucks to say zero. So what are you talking about? We've won about? five games in a row on three occasions, but we've never extended that figure to six. Bro, uh, uh, hold on one second. I need to go back and get yeah. this, and and I've got to do it. I've got to find out this now because that is yeah, going to it out. scream at me if I'm wrong. Titans. Okay, so beat the Knights thirty six six. Beat Manly forty two twenty four. That's the game I was talking about at Brookie, I think. Uh, beat the Broncos eighteen six. Beat the Bulldogs eighteen fourteen. I beat you fourteen ten against the Dragons. Five games in a row right there in twenty twenty. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So we've won five games in a row on three occasions, but we've never extended that to six. And for the question, we're looking for more than five. Oh my God, I was thinking five or more. I was thinking five or more. Even I was wrong that's anyway. More than five. I said two. Oh, more, yeah, more than yeah. That's that's my bad. I misheard or I I misread hmm. the question internally. I'm I'm taking 2020, but with that being said, for what I what I heard, but. I will take the loss on the question. Um, but at least, people, you can understand my reasoning. I misunderstood the question. But technically, said, at the end yeah. of the, or, or technically at the end of the 2020 season, we actually had a longer, the longest win streak in the comp because Penrith lost in the grand final, mm. and Storm hadn't built back a five win streak yet. So we did get that. And um, yeah, from what I can see on Rugby League Project, again, we've won five games in a row three times. We've won four games in a row four times. And we've won three games in a row nine times. We have never won more than five in a row. We've always fell off on that sixth game. Oh, so the uh, answer, so so the answer was zero? Zero. If I had have heard the question, I would have absolutely said that because I knew that five 
was the mm. most that we had. I just... Ah, that's really annoying that I misunderstood the question. Close. Very, very close. I'm sure fans I would have one hundred percent give you. I would have one hundred percent got that right if I heard heard the question mm. correctly. Oh my god, that's really frustrating. <laughs> well, this is another one based uh, around our history. So another hard one. How many times throughout Titans history have we finished with a positive four and against record? <laughs> That's a hard... 2007. That's a real hard question, that one. Um, geez. Try to think through, like, which seasons were we successful and were we successful enough that you say yes, but four and against was positive or not? Oh, like, I, even though we made the eight in 2021, we did not have a, a positive points differential. I think it was, like, minus eight or minus 11 or something. And that was... Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait, yeah, because that, that was the year we beat the Warriors by 44 nil or whatever and we're able to get above... The Sharks, I think. Anyway, long story short, we were, might, we were negative points differential. Uh, 2016. Did we have a plus points differential there? Um, 2016. I'm going to go out there and say 2016. It's a really hard question. I'll say 2016. Tick. I'll say 2010. Tick. <laughs> I'll say 2009. Tick. Done. They are the only three seasons yeah. that we've done it. Well done. I got a hard question. <laughs> yeah, I mean, bleak. I would have. Uh, I would have stopped at 2009, by the way, because I know that 2007, 2008 were building years, and we were coming. But I knew that 2009, 2010 were the year, like 2009 was preluding our prelim, and then 2010 was our prelim, and then 2016 we uh, just made the eight over the Raiders. Yeah, yeah, and I mean that really sums up even our last finals run in 2021. We had a negative four a gangster and we made it somehow. It's mm. it's awesome that we got to experience finals again. But yeah, only three times in history we've we, we've scored more points than we've had scored on us throughout this season. A uh, bit of a, a, a not the best piece of history for us, but I'm sure we're definitely going to have a positive four and against this season as well. Another oh, final hard question: <clears throat> The Titans have the most wins at Seabus Stadium. Suncorp Stadium is the place we have the second most amount of wins, but which rugby league venue have we won the third most amount of games at in Australia? Um, Let me. I, I just I'll want to clarify here. I want to clarify that Skill Park is not included. No, so well, and we were playing at Carrara. That's that's not going to include it. So because okay. that's now Metricon. So uh, that's a. I'm well, it's actually that Heritage Bank Stadium program. now as well. But yes. Oh, sorry, Heritage Bank. Um, but so, yeah, I'm saying a rugby league venue. Now, if, if I said second, you would have guessed Suncorp too easily um, because we played there and had some great wins there, yeah. uh, most notably last year when we smashed the Broncos and the Eels at Magic Ground. Uh, but let's uh, let's go into it. Where have we won our third most amount of games? Definitely not New Zealand, that's for sure. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we don't play at Allianz much, uh, so I will take Allianz out of the equation that's new or old. We haven't even played at the new Allianz Um I will post COVID. It, well, with fans there, we haven't. I don't believe played at Allianz, uh, but we also didn't win many there anyway. Uh, I don't recall us winning many at a core. Um, Combank slash Pert. Are we? Is Combank Pertech included as the same stadium or as separate? The same. Okay. Um, Knights. We don't usually win a great deal there. Brookvale's not an awful shout, to be completely honest with you. It's not an awful shout. I'm not saying that that's necessarily the answer, though. Cogra, Wollongong as well. We've won a couple there. Penrith, I won't even look at. Because we don't really play Penrith and Penrith too much. Uh, oh, it's going to be surely a Tigers stadium because we've beaten them so many times. It could be Campbelltown because I feel like we've played there more. Uh, any other teams, Bulldogs, I don't think, you know, because again, that would have been a core and we don't play at Belmore much. I uh, can't wait for this year. So right now, my thinking is between the Dragons at maybe Wollongong and Campbelltown for the Tigers is where I'm looking at, or Brookvale for Manly. I'm going to go with Campbelltown just based on the fact that we've beaten, the, our best winning record is against the Tigers. So I'm going to assume that it's them because I know we beat them a lot at home and I'm pretty certain we beat them quite a bit down there. But then again, they are separated by two stadiums in Leichhardt and Campbelltown, but I will go with Campbelltown. 
so you you, you you knew it yourself because they're separated by two stadiums. Yes, we do have the most wins over them, but oh, it's Leichhardt. not at the same venue. No, no, it's not at Leichhardt. Oh. It's not the Tigers. It's another team. Is it one of the three teams I mentioned? Yes. Oh, it's, it's Brookvale, isn't it? Yes, it is. So it's... Uh, we so it would have been Metricon Stadium or Heritage Bank, whatever it is now. Sorry, if I didn't add Rugby League venue, we had seven wins there. But the true answer is four points or Brookvale Oval, where we've won six of our twelve games. Yeah, that's yeah. Where well, our, so our... again, I'm happy that I at least mentioned it as a part of my three. It's like the other one where I had the fifty-fifty. I know I got it wrong, but I think the people at home can respect the fact that I I do still. I, well, one, I knew the Tigers were our best winning record against. Um, but also, too, I did mention Brookie, and would, I, I'm going to ask you a question. I don't know if you have it on hand. Is Wollongong third? Oh, I don't have that on me at the moment, um, mm. but we can definitely look into that after. Yeah. Um, yeah, really good job, though. That was a tough question, and you did, you did a good job of breaking that down and getting close to the answer there. Final one. I've deemed this is impossible, but I haven't made it impossible i've just made it very <laughs> hard let's say uh i don't think you'll get this one because it, it's about players of the past what, what do i what do i get perfect. if i well what if i get if i'll get it virtual <laughs> high five through the screen thank you my friend um <laughs> all righty for the last question of this trivia impossible name three titans players that have left us played for another club or code and then returned to the titans for a second stint i need three players that have done that throughout our history Ooh, that's a you cheap. should be able to get one easy, but it's tough fight picking. Because the thing players. is, right, is that like, I don't think that young Tom Apia played for us and then went to rugby and then came back to us. He was Storm, Titans, Rugby, Storm, or was it Titans? Um, young Tom Apia is the main one that obviously comes to my mind. Uh, Matty Rogers was done with his rugby union days by the time. Um, Jared Hayne obviously did not come to, uh, he didn't start with her so the question just to clarify because I've got I've misunderstood a couple of questions here the question is they played at the Titans went to another code and then came back to the Titans right? Code or NRL club so they left to play somewhere else and then oh, came back Brian Kelly's one because um, he was Titans Manly Titans correct? Well he didn't play NRL for us before he left Ah. Uh... Um, Give you guys you understand know. my reasoning behind that one, though. Okay. Um, oh, okay. Let me just scroll through these players here. Yeah, because Lukey Page, he was there, but he didn't play. He went from Be the Burley Bears to the Dragons and then back to the Bears, so that wouldn't be included. But Lukey Page, what a man. What a player. What a player, the old mm. Lukey Page. Dominated Queensland Cup. Um... Uh, okay. I'm trying to focus on the ones that have been NRL related. That's the one that I don't get that, uh, that BK. I don't think Tyron Roberts is one of them. I don't think so. It could you be. Sure about that? Well, he's in my brain. Not just, not just NRL clubs. It can be Super League clubs. Well, I'm going to say Tyron Roberts here, Jane. Correct. He left for the Warrington <laughs> Wolves for one season and then returned with us. Okay. There's one. Dude, you're going to kick yourself when you don't get... like. There's one obvious one that I thought you would have got straight away. I'm disappointed you haven't got it. Um, the hint I can give you... He did I can't wait. The, yeah, 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 he did yeah, a backflip yeah. at the other club that he joined before he came back to us. I can't wait for your turn next week, mate. And I'll say the same thing to you I'm when you're stuck, on the spot. Hey, yeah. When you're on the spot, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm stuffed. I'm no good under pressure like we saw in the draft. <laughs> um, he did a Come on, you've got to get this one, man. Shut up, Dane. <laughs> you've got this one. Oh, my Come God. Come on. Oh, my God. Um... He wears a headgear. Come on, that's two massive hints. He wears a headgear at his other club he went to. He did I'm trying to scroll through our entire history of players in our team right now. I'm trying to scroll through them. Um, uh, I'm going through play... Um, okay, I'm going to quickly just... Okay, can I get... It? It's not a player who plays with us now, is it? None of these players are currently with us, no. 
I'm going to kick myself. I'm going to kick off. You've so, got this one. I'm so sorry. I'm so, so he, sorry. He was with us in 2007. Oh, Nathan Friend. Yes. And when mm. I'm saying backflip, of course, the Warriors yeah, that's tribe what, where he went up did the backflip. Yeah, that's what I recognize. Since you said headgear, and then I pictured the, I pictured what Nathan Friend, I pictured Nathan Friend, and then obviously I reminded myself of that Warriors game mm. where he did the backflip over and then got the pass away. Yes, yeah. so... Uh, neither him for These that next, one, not the time Roberts one. There's three one. more options, though, for the last person for you to pick. I don't think you'll get it, man. They're like, Two players are kind of obscure. Um, and one went back. So he was with the Titans. He went back to a Queensland Cup side and then got picked up by the Titans again. So technically he did leave us because he wasn't doing pre-seasons or anything with us. Uh... Nah, I don't think I'm going to get this one. I'm happy for you to tell me them. I think I've done pretty well today, so I'll, I'll, I'm will i happy for you to tell me these ones. Okay. So the other ones that I could come up with to answer this, uh, going through Rugby League Project again, was Jamal Fogarty, because he left purely as a Bears player after playing like <laughs> one game for us and then came back. I was thinking Jamal, but I thought that was a bit of a stretch. Um, but I'm a, yeah, that's, that's fine. I was thinking Jamal. Jordan Aitkins, who we, met, we mentioned already, mm. uh, he went to the Eels for a short stint and came right back. Yeah. And Will Matthews, uh, back role we had for a few oh, years there, went with us, then he went to the Dragons, then he came back to us. Mm. But dude, to get two of those is really, really, really good. Well, I got Nathan Frame was like after significant hints. Uh, Tyron Roberts, I'm pretty impressed that I got, uh, but Nathan yep. Frame was a was one that um, I needed hints for. And I was thinking Jamal, but I thought because so he was. Wait, uh, for some reason... No, he was... What, what was he? Bears? What? So, Titans, he played like one game for us. He debuted for us. I yeah. think we had some injuries. Then he stayed with us for like the rest of that year. Didn't get off another deal and went purely with the Burley Bears in Q Cup. And then a couple of years later when he was... Um, mm. Either won the premiership there or was half back of the year, we picked him up again and gave him another chance. Yeah, there you go. Well, look, I'm, mm. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I'm pretty happy with my performance today. Obviously, not 10 yeah. out of 10. It was impossible to get 10 out of 10. Um, but I would have got the one if I didn't misunderstand the question in regards to the 5-plus game one. Um, well, we can recap it now. So, mm. first question was, I needed three players with 140 or more games. You got you got one. that with assistance with some hints. Yeah, but one uh, of the, the major one sponsors. One of three. With the major sponsors, you were able to name three as easy as you like. Mm. The what was our name before the Titans question? You a dolphin with help it. again, yeah, yeah with that help. Was hinted, yeah. Um, so I mean, you can have two out of three there on easy. Um, the crowd attendance, you got half a point there. And, I, and, I, and I think more. it's controversial too, Rugby League Project. And I think it's controversial yeah. too. Fair, yeah, I know you do. <laughs> you made that very well known. <laughs> um, and then there was the beating a team by 30 or more. You got mm. the Knights there. So the, there's um, three there. It was kind of... Yeah, I did get the Knights. I'll, I'll take that one. But it was 50-50. But yes, I'll take I'll say Because at least I, I kind of mentioned it in the 50-50. You nailed the Jordan Atkins one. So there's four there. Mm. Uh, you didn't understand the other questions, so like we'll just we, we can leave that one out. Uh, the four and a gangst you got, yeah, you got that. So there's five. Mm. You got uh oh, and I'll give you half points for the last two because you got one of three and on a possible, and you got uh, the venue up with a second guess. So mm. all up, man, six out of ten. And I said five was the pass mark. So we're giving some half marks here and there, but. I'm going to give you a pass today. I think I well, think I, your uh, your time's knowledge is there. Yeah, well, I think it's like next week as well. Like I'm as long as you as long as long as not like naming every club. As long as you kind of get the reasoning. Oh, that's what I tried to do today. I tried to explain my reasoning to people so that you can understand kind of where I was coming from. So even if I was wrong, you understood why I said what I said. And I think that's the same thing with you. Like next week when we do yours, is that as long as you kind of. As long as it's like two or three teams and you've got good reasoning for those three, I'm happy to give you at least half a point if you got it wrong. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. As long as you can explain how you got to your decision um, mm. and if it's close or there's some reasoning around what you're saying, then yeah, I'm happy to, to do that as well. But that does wrap up our our trivia for Blaze. I'll be back next week to face the music and do my <laughs> 10 questions. We want to Come know on, man. You go. Come on, man. It's an easy one. Come on, man. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, I was hinting so hard for the Nathan friend. I wanted you to get it. Um, maybe I hinted a bit too much in the end, but you got it. So 
Job well done there. Uh, very interested to see how our listeners went. If you're on YouTube, please plug mm. that into the comment section now. I'm interested to know how you went on the... And if any one of hard, you... Too easy. If any one of you say 10 out of 10, I will straight up call you a liar. <laughs> like, I will yeah, straight you have up to be. Call you. No, you wouldn't get 10 out of 10 on this one. It was intentionally made that way so that, you know, you had to try to really work hard to get that pass mark mm. of 5 out of 10. Uh, but yeah, I'll be back next week, guys, to face music with my trivia. I want to say thank you very much to all of our listeners. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Remember to like it on YouTube, rate us five stars on Spotify and Apple, and we will see you next week. Over to you, Blaze, to say farewell to the show. I am coming next week, my friend. I am coming. Mm-hmm. Don't worry, man. Appreciate you guys as usual. Thumbs up, subscribe. Times went to come this year. Men's, women's, tweet head seagulls, 3 Pete. Slap, slap, done. See you next week.